Now, I am so hurt and confused because I've been using the M4 iPad Pro for more than a month and while there's lots of things to love about it, I ran into two big issues that made me feel that I couldn't replace it with my Mac. So I've got two people to help me to figure out how to fix those problems and I guarantee that they can also help you to get the best out of this M4 iPad Pro, especially with the new iPad OS 18 beta that has just come out. So let's start with what I really love about it. And yes, you have guessed it, is the screen. Because this tandem OLED tech makes watching content on this iPad Pro even better than my 38,000 ringgit TV. Why? Because not only that the quality was amazing, but because it's extremely light, I felt like I was carrying around my TV wherever I went. And I've been just binge watching on YouTube videos and the latest Star Wars Acolyte series only on this iPad Pro because of how amazing the quality is. The black levels were amazing and the contrast ratio once again beats a typical TV because of its overall form factor of the tablet and screen. Now speaking of TV shows, on the Apple TV app thanks to the new iPad OS 18 public beta update, there was the insights feature which was great to know who is exactly on the screen. You know those moments where you're wondering, hey, this person looks very familiar and then you go and Google on IMDB to find out who it is. Well, now you don't have to because it's all in there. Now going back to comparing this with my TV screen because screen glare was my biggest drawback especially since my home blinds were not blackout blinds. So watching videos or anything on a TV during the day was a really not good experience. Then the matte screen on the iPad Pro made it easier to watch anything during the day so I could just sit on my favourite area on the sofa and not worry about any screen glare. Then the new customizable home screen was really refreshing since this feature was out after I got this iPad Pro. And after installing the public beta version, it really felt like I had a brand new iPad with me especially with the new control centre customization features which is now available on this public beta version. Next would be the speakers. So before this, I've always used the 13-inch M3 MacBook Air as my video consumption device on my dining table at home. And while the speakers on the Mac was decent, but when I compare this with the M4 iPad Pro, I just couldn't go back to the M3 MacBook Air. Now besides watching videos and series as mentioned earlier, I even started listening to more music on this since it's way better than typically using the iPhone speakers too and again thanks to the overall portability of this tablet. Now what I also loved was my overall typing experience specifically on the new Magic Keyboard because it truly feels like I'm typing on a Mac. The aluminum build quality was amazing, the function keys on top also made me feel like I was using the MacBook Pro all the way so I ended up using this to type my emails especially my script more on this iPad too. Now I also found that writing scripts on the iPad was also faster compared to typing on the Mac and this is because on Google Docs there's a spell check assistant below so if any point in time if I want to use the right word or spelling I can just reach out and touch the screen and this makes it way faster than using my trackpad and then selecting each sentences or words one by one. However one little drawback compared to the MacBook Pro is the fact that I cannot sit on the sofa while typing on the Magic Keyboard. It is possible but not as comfortable compared to the Mac. So this is something worth considering if you're planning to use the iPad in a similar lab situation. Okay, so by now you might know that the camera has been reduced to just one camera at the back instead. While that didn't really affect me, but what's lovely is that this new flash makes scanning documents so much easier since the software will remove unwanted shadows. So this makes doing my claims monthly super easily. Then the split view has also helped a lot when it comes to doing research and scripting as well. Then the sidebar has also been refreshed to which will surface more sections of the same app. Now speaking of browsing, as a company Owner, I use the Zero accounting software a lot on my Mac and I noticed that it loads and responds way faster on the Safari browser than Chrome 2. And since you can continue browsing from where you left off from your iPhone to the iPad, it also came in very handy more than I expected it to be. So yes guys, just say no to Chrome. Now speaking of accounting, the Matt Notes feature also was a huge welcome feature on the new public beta version of iPad OS 18.2 and the fact that it also calculates in real time is just crazy. And while I don't use it a lot every single day, but when I did, it did come in handy. Now this Matt Notes not only works in the calculator app but also in the notes app as well and yes i will be talking more about this apple pencil pro later in this video and while i'm not a hardcore gamer but if i really wanted to game on the ipad pro it would transform 
transform the iPad into a gaming machine. And playing games like Genshin Impact together with the controller made me feel like I was playing on a high quality console gaming where the game was flawless at the highest settings with motion blur turned on. And because Mac OS can't officially play Genshin Impact, so I cannot do that on the Mac. So this has become my favorite place to play Genshin Impact. Or shall I say the only place that I have been playing Genshin Impact on even more than my iPhone. And of course, there are also other high quality games available like Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, which has performed amazingly well too. So yes, playing games on this M4 iPad Pro is truly effortless, not breaking a sweat at all. Then finally, the battery life on the iPad Pro has also been really amazing too. And I've been getting more than a day's use consistently if I use it more for work like writing scripts, checking emails or doing some research related browsing. Alright, now let's talk about my problem of trying to work with this iPad Pro which I couldn't replace my MacBook Pro and first is video editing specifically on Final Cut Pro. You see, I just love and cannot live without Final Cut Pro on my Mac. It is a software that the entire Adam Lobo TV team use every single day and the Final Cut Pro on the iPad is not exactly the same as the Mac OS version. So I reached out to get help from a fellow content creator ZY from ZY Productions to help me with that and give me some tips on how I can implement my video editing on the iPad Pro. Okay guys, so yes, I have Z with me from ZY Production or Z Productions and uh, I understand that you have been using the Final Cut Pro on the iPad. So tell me your experience about how you switched from the Mac version of Final Cut Pro to the iPad version or the sure iPad Pro thing. version. Yeah. Okay, I think we're all caught by surprise a little when we fired out Final Cut Pro for iPad for the first time because first impressions is like, this is a bit different from what I've seen in yeah. the Mac. And it there definitely was a bit of a transitional period because unlike something, for example, DaVinci Resolve for iPad, which looks exactly like the desktop version, this is redeveloped from the ground up. The iPad is a touch-centric device, but they've made it in a way that even if you were to hold this in your hands and use only the touchscreen to do your edit, it works. This complements the Mac version very, very well. And I think we'll dive a lot more into that um, throughout this session, but the iPad Pro version of Final Cut Pro has not just a few, many distinct advantages. Live drawing, is the biggest thing for me on Final Cut Pro for iPad. In fact, when I say that this complements my Mac version of Final Cut Pro, live drawing is what I lean to the most. If you look at a few of my latest videos or reels, there is always some bit of live drawing in there. If a scene or a particular shot of B-roll could benefit from a live drawing, I'm sure you, you, you've come across more than this more than once. You want an arrow go in pointing at this, circle this, you're not gonna do that on a Mac with the trackpad and all. Okay, fantastic. So I was just going to get into that because I wanted to know what are your three main things that you love about the mm -hmm. iPad Pro's version of Final Cut Pro and what are your best practices and tips. So we're going to go into that. So just give us three. You have the screen sure. recording yep. already, right? This is recording. Okay. First thing is the first thing I lean towards and yeah. that's this, um, this jog wheel. It's a very new way to use Final Cut Pro. We don't have this on the Mac version. We always have scrubbing with cursors and all, but this really reminds me of the hardware transport wheels that professional editors use. That little wheel, it gives you so much precision with this. And I think for a touch-centric interface, like you could still jog with your Apple Pencil with Hover, but going frame by frame with this is so intuitive and it's it's not just limited to scrolling your playhead along for example if i tap on this clip here and i select this left handle and i toggle to nudge i can use this to really fine tune and dial in my edits down to the exact frame is so much more precise and gives you so much more control this is obviously maps. something that you cannot do on the uh, mac version exactly without say reporting uh, resorting to a transport a hardware transport this is just right there and you can move this anywhere you like you're not limited to using that in any corner if you want to use your left thumb to roll it go ahead if you want to put it over here wherever you want it to be nice and just the overall the little attention to details they've done with this for example my program monitors here i can tap this and do picture in picture. And I can move this window around and have all this real estate, especially on an 11 inch iPad like this, real estate is pretty, pretty precious. I can have all the room I want for everything else while I have my picture in picture just sort of flo floating where it can be at the moment. That's true. And third is of course, live drawing. For example, say I want a line pointing down at this, just tap on that drawing icon, circle this, 
point an arrow at it. And my favorite thing about this is compared to recording this live, say, I don't like the way this arrow looks. I can undo and redraw it as many times as I want. And the final live drawing will only have that final best take. So it just disappeared really quickly there because I can extend this clip. And of course I can control how quickly it draws on. So if I just have this, go to inspect. The inspector's on the left. That was one of the biggest things to get used to because we're so used to the inspector being on the right. So note to self, inspector's on the left, live drawing and draw on. I'll just cut that down to say half a second, jog that back. Could just use the jog wheel to do that. And there it is. So that's three things. Fantastic. So I, I like how he broken down everything very clearly, especially using live drawing and you know, the whole jog wheel thing is something which I never personally really try in my workflow. So hopefully we look into that. Now I understand uh, ZY that you also are planning to do a two day at Apple session. Yes, I am. Can I tell everybody who's watching this video because hopefully this video will be out before, which I'm sure will be out before. Still so yes, to go. tell everybody about your session and what they can expect from the session. Sure thing. This is a nice little primer for the session. I didn't spoil too much for the session. So if you've seen this video, please still come for the session. It will be on the 17th of August at Apple The Exchange TRX. If you've not been, this is a really good excuse to finally go check it out. It is in an absolutely gorgeous store. Beautiful, beautiful. We were there multiple yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> Adam, you had your session there. Absolutely incredible. Um, Final Cut Pro for iPad, this will be how to apply some video editing hacks. Lovely. Okay, so I'll put the links down below for you guys to check out ZY. And thank you so much. I guess this would hopefully solve my issue of trying to convert totally from the MacBook Air to this iPad Pro. So thank you, ZY. And make sure to check out his exact today Apple links down below. And back to the video. All right, now that we have settled my video editing problems with ZY, let's go into another area that I feel that I'm not using enough, and that is the Apple Pencil Pro. Because the Apple Pencil Pro has amazing features like the barrel roll, double tap to switch, squeeze for actions, and so much more. And here is where I've reached out to another friend, Danny Wan, who is a pro at Freeform, to get his knowledge on fully taking advantage of this new Apple Pencil Pro and how to implement Freeform into the team's workflow. Okay, so right now I have Danny Wan right here. So Danny, thank you so much for coming and joining us in this particular video. A very tough video, I have to say. Yeah. Because I need some, you know, advice for someone who has been using the Apple Pencil Pro for the longest time, especially with apps like Freeform, right? So with that, can you please demonstrate with us all the different features that the new Apple Pencil Pro has? All right, uh, what I have here is this Apple Pencil Pro. So you can have a very different kind of uh, choices or features you can do. The first one you can like is a uh, double tap, which one I've been using often. Just like when you're writing something on the on the board, everything, that's a mistake. So you can just double tap, you can change the tools that you've been using, like the previous one. Let's say it's a, a good. eraser, everything, right? You can just double tap it and erase everything. And the final one is squeeze for action. All you do is just squeeze. And the tools will just appear right over here. You can just pick whatever you want. Nice. The pen, or even you want uh, lazy to type, you can just write it down. We change it to alphabet. Very nice. Okay, so I know that this was done on Apple Notes, right? Yeah. But I understand that you are a person who uses Freeform a lot. Yeah. I went online, I did some research about Freeform, but I really did not implement that. So can you give us your implementation on how you use Freeform every day? That means mm -hmm. how does anyone use Freeform every day? Okay, so eventually uh, Freeform is one of the best app for me like, in iPad OS, which I've been using it for all my daily routine. Even like storytelling, brainstorming, or eventually if I'm doing some uh, conversation with my friend, with my team, I will use it to like share with them and then they will give me some feedback. Let's say when I've been doing my brainstorming, I'll be like drawing all the things right over here. I can just uh, write ideas or kind of uh, things that I wanted to do, to do list over here because the best thing about the free form, uh, free form is that there's no low limit you can just go through another places you can just write until the end of the age which is no problem at all so you can just continue the whole map mapping right over the free form so like, let's say when i'm doing some there's a one of the product i'll be doing with my partners with my team i'll be like 
putting all the ideas into one, one place. On the other side, they will try to add on the feedback and all the ideas and do all the storyboard, everything over here. Like I said, in the office, they will come back to me all the ideas, they will put all the notes over here. You can just put all the notes form things, you can just write everything over here. Good, very nice, final. So you mentioned about uh, doing something with a team. So mm -hmm. since you know we do not implement freeform into our workflow for Adam Lobo TV uh, for our video production kind of team, right? So what is your advice on how we can implement freeform into our Adam Lobo TV team workflow? Uh, workflow. I think the first thing is that you need to have the storyboard first. Correct. You just draw it out here, just like what I've been doing. Yeah. So eventually, I will do the storyboard. I'll put all the sticky notes over here and write down all the the things I've been in my mind for for my team to, to have a look. Uh, this is not the first one should be doing. Uh, this, this second one should be the one be moving up. Oh, there you go! Okay. Wow! So I'll be moving it to another place. This one together. So this sticky note is this built in within Freeform for you to add, or is that something where you had to download the? Oh, it's already separately? inside the Freeform, so you can just use it, use it uh, anytime you want. How it. do you add a sticky note? Can you just Very show simple. all of us? All you just do is on this tab, this tab one here. And you can anytime you can wow. move it, and then tap it, done, and then you can write anything you want. Blah 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 blah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so I guess that would be it. Thank you so much, Danny One. I think um, this has definitely given me more options to use this amazing uh, Apple Pencil Pro a bit more because <laughs> instead of just using this for navigation and stuff, I think Freeform would be one of the best ways for us to really implement having storyboard ideas rather than just typically using a non-sketchy kind of uh, app as well. Thank you so much, Danny. Have Thank you. your time. Thank and, you. And uh, don't forget to follow him. I'll put all his social media page all over here and make sure to follow him as well. Thank you. All right, so there you have it, my in-depth review of the M4 iPad Pro after using it for a month. And I hope that this video can help you to make a purchase decision whether or not you should totally switch to the iPad Pro or if you should get it or you should get the M3 MacBook Air instead. If you do, check out my review of that over here.